Helping Seniors of Brevard with Joe Steckler. And Joe, great uh, Wednesday afternoon to you, and uh, looking forward to a great show today. Thank you, John. I, you know, I like to think that um, all shows that we uh, do here from uh, WEJF 90.3 FM um, are of some help to our listeners. Um, I know there are many of you out there, that's, not many, but I know some, that have been with us since we started the show, John, back in uh, 2000. That's a lot of years. It's 19 years. And it, it sort of shows the importance of talk radio. Uh, the other thing, the only other thing I would like to our, our listeners to remember is that it is talk radio. And if you have a question or if you have a comment about something that my panelists, Carrie Fink and I, are talking about this morning, you're certainly welcome to call us here at WEJF. The phone number is 733-9998. That's area code 321-722-9998. And I got Carrie nodding, not yes, shaking. Yes. And that means that I said, I said it right. Yes. But folks... All, all joking aside, the purpose of helping seniors is to inform, educate, and connect people in Brevard County with services they might need. I'm also, since I've been answering the phone in place of the education specialist since uh, last November, um, some of the phone calls have opened my eyes to a real need for certain types of nonprofit organizations. And that's what Carrie Fink, my panelist, and I are going to talk about this morning. So I'd like to welcome Carrie Fink, who is our media director, and he's also the president of his own company, TYG Media. Welcome, Carrie. Thank you. It's good to be here, of course. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, Carrie, I think sometimes that uh, people underestimate the need for information, and not just information, but getting the right kind of information. Um, you know, I, I can afford to have somebody do my taxes, mm -hmm. but there there are a lot of people out there in the community, and in, I think our county commissioners fail to realize the importance of an aging population in a county. When you when you talk about Broad County senior population. You can figure about what are seven, eight, nine, and ten out of three thousand sixty-seven counties in the United States. Just a simple fact: that we're in the top ten mm -hmm. of the number of counties with a population over the age of sixty-five, and we're 50, roughly fifty percent of us fall in that category. And that's a problem. It's uh, and. You listeners that are 70, 80, and 90 years old know the difficulty of living on a fixed income. You know, prices continue to go up. And I was, uh, my wife has been listening to some of the calls that I've, I've been making with people. Mm -hmm. They call in for help, Carrie. And uh, she says, Joe, how are people going to? pay these costs of rent mm -hmm. because where I can remember here in Broad County when you could rent a decent place for $400, $450 a month. Now the cost for a decent rental place is $1,000 a month. And if seniors don't have somebody trying to champion or advocate for them, how do we ever expect to be able to cover the cost of aging living. It, it, it's a problem. It's something I think more about since I've been calling any of these calls. And I know that it looks like you're bursting to say something because your <laughs> head is nodding back and forth. So uh, with, I'll, I'll be quiet. Let you talk about this topic a minute. Well, you know, uh, we talk often that sometimes the, the key thing is we can't all solve all the problems, but a lot of times there's a piece of information that can make all the difference in the world. And that's why an organization such as uh, Helping Seniors of Brevard can be so, so valuable to a person in a time of crisis. 
Um, we've talked over the uh, over the time that when we have um, callers who call that senior information helpline at three two one four seven three seven 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 zero that they are connected with somebody who actually cares about what's going on and is willing to not just give a referral but try to make sure that the referral actually has value and will will at least move the needle as far as that person is concerned. So when you ask the question, um, and the, the other mission of Helping Seniors, as you know, is getting information out there. I think one of the reasons we exist is to beat the drum to remind not only the county commissioners, but city commissioners, people who are in uh, places of leadership and authority, that there are a lot of seniors and you need to um, be aware of the plight of seniors. I think most of us break it down to inside of our own family. We may be aware of a mother or a father or if you're younger, a grandmother or grandfather. But um, the leaders who who are charged with uh, helping us navigate this whole thing really have to become aware. And I think for most people, they're just not aware. And that's that's the other reason why helping seniors is so important is because uh, through the articles and the columns that you do in uh, places like Hometown News, Aldea Today, Ebony News Today, um, in Senior Scene Magazine, all these things help contribute to an awareness that we do need to do more for seniors. Well, I know that I was I had I had reached a point on our call system where I was down to a, a backlog of only four calls, and I'd already answered each one of those calls, and I knew that uh, the reason I left those calls on my voice on my answering machine was because I knew I needed to get more information back to these people. Right. But I know yesterday I had three new phone calls and this morning I had two. So I'm going to have to talk to those people when I go back home. I listened to what the people said, and I didn't say anything that was extremely uh, important except there was one phone call that I know I'll take first when I go back to my house after the radio show because y- you-, you can tell by listening to a, a-, a-, a person's voice how badly they might need some information at the time. Yes. And you made a great point. We, we just, yeah, we could just give these people a phone number for mm-hmm. a tax uh, payer. This morning I got something from the Alzheimer's Foundation. They passed me the uh, name of a, of a tax uh, organization that will do the taxes free mm-hmm. for uh, people that can't afford uh, to go to a tax uh, place to get it, sure. get it done. I get other calls. I, I, I've had dentists call me and tell me, uh, yeah, they can help. They can't do it free, but they can help. And at least they can drive the cost of a denture down. Mm-hmm. I, I get this for so many other things, little things. But, yeah, we could just give these people a phone number and, and you know, and, and wish that uh, they might get what they need. But the follow-up part of it is what's really important. And the reason I emphasize that is because I had a phone call that, that I answered and gave the lady uh, what I thought she needed. And um, I got to thinking, and I, I called her back, and I said, uh, well, I said, was your husband uh, a vet in World War mm-hmm. II or in Korea or Vietnam? She said, yes, World War II. And he's 98 years old. Wow, wow. And he has three teeth. Three teeth. Oh, my up. goodness. So I said, are you aware of the Veterans Clinic in Vieira? She said, no, I'm not. Wow. And um, I asked her if she was aware of Veterans Aid and Attendance Program. No, she wasn't aware of that either. She wasn't aware that there was a dental clinic at the VA clinic at, out, out in Vieira. Now, the question is, who qualifies for all these services? Mm-hmm. And the only way you can really find that out is to call the Veterans Office at 633-2012, and that's the Veterans Information Office out in Vieira. Forget about all these other places, folks. The place to call is the government office in Vieira, and it's staffed by people. I think most of them are former military people that can give you a straight answer. Uh, one of the counselors out there is a guy named Dennis Van Oersdale. Mm-hmm. We've had Dennis on the radio. We've had Dennis on our TV shows. 
And if you want to know more about the VA folks and what Dennis does, you can go to the Helping Seniors uh, website, helpingseniorsofward.org. Look up the TV show that Carrie mm-hmm. filmed. Mm-hmm. And they'll tell people, well, what, what, what will those, what, if they go to those websites, Carrie, and people pull up these videos, what kind of information can they get from them? Oh, there's really, there, you know, over the years, we've done hundreds and hundreds of television programs for helping seniors on so many different topics. They're available on the Helping Seniors YouTube channel. You can go to Helping Seniors of Brevard.org, and there's a search uh, place that you can say, show me about uh, veterans' benefits, and it'll pull up not only the television shows, but radio shows, articles, anything that we've covered along the way about that. And again, that's why this um, information aspect is so important, because you know, we our usual first disposition when we're confronted with a problem is to try to figure out a way to throw money at it. You know, if I just had this many dollars, I'd be able to to resolve this situation. And that may or may not be true. Sometimes it's the piece of information you need that sorts out. And just what you were saying about um, the relationship that you've developed over the years working with Dennis over at the um, – at the uh, Brevard County Government Veterans Office is so important because that's one of the benefits. When people call Helping Seniors, with your experience, you know how to kind of get to the right person to to actually um, not waste time in phone queues or get to the wrong person, but to actually get something that might help somebody. Well, I, I also like to assure the listeners that many times the calls, not many, but at times, the calls they make, uh, I don't have the answer. Right. But based on the question that they've asked, I might have a source I can go to to find out the right answer and the right person to call. Right. And I have found through the years, I, I looked, my, my wife got me a notebook that she wants me to put all these actions that are completed. Mm-hmm. So I'll have a completed file. I have a file that I'm working on. Then I'll have a notebook with the blank call sheets in so that when uh, if I have my laptop computer on my lap and somebody calls in, I just push the call button, and I can listen to what they want, want, mm-hmm. want from us, and I can fill that sheet out, record the information, and then I, when I have a chance, I can call them back if I can't answer the question right away. But I'll have a system of a completed, ongoing, and a place to go to. Think. A lot of it's just getting organized. It's just like, mm-hmm. uh, like what you're saying. If people don't call, if they don't, uh, and that's why when I, I we picked out the t- topic for the for our program today, it was uh, how to support a nonprofit. And I mm-hmm. could have just as easily said, uh, uh, find a nonprofit that helps you. I don't think, Carrie, it does a person in crisis or a person that has a need much good just to give them a phone number. They don't. I, it's been my experience that, that I can listen to somebody talk about something and it, and all the other uh, information sources sort of go through my mind at that time at, uh, that I might tell these people. And that's why sometimes I get behind because. I just take the time to talk to the people and try to get them to the right place that they need to go to get the help. Yeah. And that's why I think it's so important that organizations like Helping Seniors, and there are some others in Brevard County, but I think a lot of people don't realize that the last time I checked, there was something like over 2,000 nonprofits right here in Brevard County, 2,000. Yep. and. A lot of those organizations are asking for donations. And if, you, if, if our listeners have been following what's going on on the, on the, on the Internet and on the uh, uh, Florida State newspaper and, and hometown news where my articles are, um, that the whole nonprofit system is changing. Yes. And what... What the, what the county commissioners have done by eliminating funding for the nonprofits, and they had a big thing, if our listeners haven't uh, caught it yet, they had a big thing at the county commission last week where they uh, had a big ado about uh, they're going to fund the Brevard Cultural Alliance and the arts for another three years, mm. and they're going to give them $130,000. Hell, 
$130,000, like it sounds like a lot of money when you're trying to buy that up for 10 or 12 nonprofits. It's nothing. It's nothing. Right. And you can find that money, but you can't find uh, the money to uh, help fund things like Meals on Wheels or things like that. It's really it's really kind of incredible. There is a statistic I wanted to share. This is, this is a new piece of research um, that just came out, and this is one of the things that we have to uh, – yeah, kind of keep in mind, in our county, uh, Brevard is now the 10th largest Florida county with 582,000 people. And seniors represent 31.4% of this population. Our state's average, which everybody would say Florida is an older state, but the state's average is only 26.5%. So this is, this is the, this is the point. And this is the point that maybe we uh, that are concerned for the fate of seniors in our county could 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 pay attention to. I thought this was a very interesting t- statistic. Elder voters in Brevard County comprise forty four uh, comprise forty point four percent of um, all voters. It was only thirty four percent in two thousand sixteen. So Florida elder voters are now at thirty seven point four percent of the total. Uh, population that's voting. And so one of the things that helping seniors does is let people know about the plight of seniors so that people can let their elected officials know, hey, we need to do something. You know, I know we're concerned for kids. I know we raise sales tax for the kids. I know we're concerned about the lagoon and we try to do things that are helpful for that. But what about the seniors who live here? Shouldn't we be thinking about them in the same kind of way? So that's why this is this is so important and a little organization like helping seniors that um has been able to help over 2200 families in Brevard County really effectively without any government help <laughs> is is it's an amazing feat and it's a testimony to the businesses that uh, work with and support helping seniors and also the individuals who support it through the efforts of things like we you know like the car raffle i mean that's how we uh, help keep the doors open no, let's, uh, we got we got a little time before we take our med show break. So let's just let's, you you mentioned the car raffle because one of the one of my uh, topics I was going to talk about this morning was um, uh, how how people uh, uh, support nonprofits and why you sh- and how you pick a nonprofit you want to support and in picking or selecting a nonprofit you want to support you have to realize that that nonprofit that you pick to support does need your financial support. Yes. Because with the act of the uh, county commissioners to completely take away all the money for the nonprofits in Brevard County, and while it was a pittance to begin with, the pittance becomes nothing. So this means that most nonprofits are going to be dependent on some type of fundraiser. Mm Mm-hmm. An annual fund drive where they ask people that know what they're doing to support them Mm -hmm. or, in our case, develop sponsors that have a particular need to what we do to serve seniors because they have the same – they have the same uh, uh, chance to support seniors. So they become – you know, supporters of our organization mm-hmm. because it not only helps them in their business, but uh, their profits then help pay for our way. So yes, what we've done is we've we've moved away from being a non you know a nonprofit organization that's always begging to a nonprofit that is trying to have a solid business plan Mm -hmm. to provide for its continuance in the community. That's right. That's right. One of the, one of the problems is as, as more and more hands go out saying, and there's a lot of worthy causes in our community, but one of the challenges is that we've talked about, I think it back in the days when, when you were the head of the Brevard commission on aging, I mean, I think you guys had what 1.2 million uh, in in money earmarked for charities and things like that, and we're watching that getting whittled away. So, um, you know, there's two ways to approach that. One is we need to make our our wishes known to the people who represent us at the Brevard Commission um, about the about the importance of restoring those kind of funds. But the second thing is, you know, put your money where your mouth is and support those organizations that have made a difference. And as you know, um, 
in helping seniors, we've tried very hard to create, like you said, a business model. Uh, this, that's the reason why there's a number of businesses who get uh, get connected and underwrite the work of helping seniors uh, because it costs money. It costs money to uh, publish in Senior Scene every month. It costs money to be on the radio every week. It costs money to be doing television shows. Um, it, it, you know, these are all things that it costs money to man the telephones and pay for uh, the expenses associated with that. And it, the only reason it happens is because people are willing to get involved and work with us. And we have, we're blessed really with a, an amazing plethora of very, very strong, reputable businesses in our area that have not only been with Helping Seniors, but been with you since the organization started. I'm talking about people like the I Institute or uh, Bill Johnson, elder law attorney, or uh, Dr. Sheldon or uh, Vitas Hospice and people like that who've really been concerned about the work of Helping Seniors. Well, I think a part of that uh, equation people need to understand, Carrie, is that the people that we try to draw in as sponsors are some of the more uh, uh, elder-aware businesses yes. in the community. And we try to get the biggest bang for the buck that we can in providing these services. Um, I was I, I, I have had a thought about uh, uh, people needing to know how to pick a charity that they really want to support. I think a lot of people, and it's just, you know, thinking about those statistics that you just gave concerning the elder population in the county, uh, consider for a moment you senior citizens that are living on a fixed income and you would like to do something, but you know that you can't do some things because you know, you know what you really can afford. And we've gotten to a position in our lives where, where, we're, where we've really lost our earning power and we're dependent on the assets that we've managed to accumulate over the years. Mm-hmm. And, so, and many times I think seniors are, are afraid uh, to tell their children or grandchildren that they might need some support. Sure. Um, it's been my ex- uh, experience in working with families that, the families that sort of stay together mm-hmm. and remain uh, continuity within the family over the years are the families that recognize or know when their seniors and their and their family might need their help, whether it be financially, mm-hmm. whether it be companion wise, mm-hmm. or would it be coming in on a weekend to do some services, uh, maybe to fix things in the house that the senior client can no longer do or should not be doing, like That's climbing right. up on a ladder or, you know, getting stuff down from shelves or helping uh, clean out uh, some of the paraphernalia. And one of the hardest things for seniors to do is to make the decision that it's time to downsize. It's right. time to give some of that stuff that we've accumulated over the years to children, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think the more clutter that seniors live with uh, makes makes it more uh, um, makes it more realistic. Or I'm, look, I'm searching for a word that if, if if we don't move the clutter out, we tend to fall and break our leg or, yes. or hurt ourselves. It, it, and, it becomes a safety yeah, issue. Yeah, it's it's nice to have Oriental rugs. And it's nice to have all the stuff. But sometimes we might need to start giving some of that stuff uh, to the kids and the grandchildren, and, and, you know. But a lot of them may not want it. Well, and that and that's you know, it's a, it's a small segue into the fact that one of the business supporters of of helping seniors at Brevard is Carla Pickerel, who has organized creative designs, and that's her whole thing. Is is she's a professional organizer and is uh, trained and equipped and good at walking into a situation of clutter and helping that person find the right path to, to, to do it. And that's the kind of like-minded people that get involved in, in helping seniors, you know, from that business sponsorship perspective. Yeah, and along that line, we just, we're just about to run out of time. We just got a, a, a guy, John Puglisi, he uh-huh. just uh, 
uh, has a real uh, a, an estate sales business right. to help people downsize. He's become one of the sponsors and a directory that's in the middle right. of Senior Scene Magazine. It's a directory of the of, of providers that are aware of senior needs and yes. can help seniors. And if you don't find what you need in there, you can call us at four seven three seven 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 zero. And I would say ninety eight percent of the time, I can tell you where to go. And if I can't tell you, that'll yeah, that we're at the, we're at the break point. So stay with us, and we'll see you on the other side of the break. Time for the second part of our show today, helping seniors of Brevard. And here's your host, Joe Steckler. Thank you, John, and welcome back to the second part of our show today, folks. Um, I'm Joe Steckler, and I'm the uh, president of the uh, organization Helping Seniors, and uh, we founded this organization to be a um, an information and education resource for seniors and those that care for seniors. Uh, where can I go to get help? How can I get help? What kind of resources are, are and sources of assistance are available to me? And I, you know, based on my own experience for many, many years, actually 29 years, of working with senior citizens, I realized that uh, there are so many sources of help out there that people mistakenly think that they're not eligible for them or they can't get that kind of help, when in fact... Almost every service that is available in the community, most of us can access. There just has to be somebody that's knowledgeable enough as to how to work their way through the system. And uh, Carrie's been with me now from uh, since the start, and he knows that uh, my my desire was always to find. Somebody, whether it would be the director or the education specialist, somebody that, preferably both, that that knew what I knew. And I've tried to put together a, a booklet which uh, uh, gives you the important sources that, that people can go for help. For instance, Gary, and we'll talk mm-hmm. about this and how why it relates to the car raffle, um, we have, if somebody has a, a problem play, paying an electric bill, there's no free ride for right. now until you die, but there is a free ride for a month or so. Right. Um, it depends on the situation. Um, there are a couple of places that people can go to and get their electrical bills or water bills paid for, but it is not something that's going to be done on a continuing basis. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, uh, I had a lady that was a diabetic called, and they had turned her electricity off, oh, no. and we found out and what, the, what had happened. We made, I think it was maybe two phone calls, and got her electricity turned back Good. on. Uh, she couldn't do it herself, but the people we called once... Once they were able to connect with the person themselves, they were able to say, yes, this did happen, and this is something that we need to correct before we cause more of a problem. And that's that's one of the beauties of having an organization that will fight for seniors. And my biggest frustration, Carrie, over the years has been to get the seniors themselves united mm-hmm. long enough and behind the cause to say to the paper or say to the county commissioners, enough is enough. It's time that seniors receive an equal treatment with children Mm -hmm. or newcomers that come into the county. Absolutely. Because one of the statistics is, you know, we have more people over 65 in our county than we have uh, children under the age of 18. And so it's not a contest like who needs more help. Everybody agrees kids need, you know, they're vulnerable, so they need protection, they need help. But there's a very reason why um, the uh, uh, Department of Children and Family Services has an adult protective division. is because they also know that there's vulnerable adults on the other side of the spectrum. And so what you speak to when you talk about the needs for seniors um you know, it's it, it's oftentimes 
the, the argument that's often placed about children, we have to speak for the children because they're not in a position to speak for themselves. But I think that's equally appropriate when we talk about a lot of the seniors who are facing some real, real difficult decisions. Do I eat or do I get that medicine that the doctor told me I need to have to live? So these are these are like life and death questions that seniors are confronted with, and they don't really necessarily know always who to go to or who they could even trust to give them a good answer. So so these are the things that is so important about an organization that can be trusted, like helping seniors. And I think that's also, honestly, one of the reasons why uh, quality businesses do get behind the work of helping seniors and sponsor it. Because not only – I was having this conversation, Joe, as you know, there's a concierge doctor up in um, – Merritt Island, Island, who's considering yeah. coming on board as a sponsor. And he said, well, he said, I'm doing a lot of advertising right now. He said, he said, in fact, I just spent $1,500 this month on a certain publication. And I said, it's, and he showed me, and it was beautiful, and it talks about the value of his office. I said, well, you, one thing I have to explain is that you, you have to understand we're different than an advertiser. This isn't, if you want space advertising, there's many good quality publications in the market. I would highly recommend a senior scene as one for, for an example. But what we do at Helping Seniors is we're about the information. This is where you as a medical doctor have a chance to talk to seniors, especially in a concierge environment, about lifestyle changes and things like that that might help them increase the value and the enjoyment of their lives. And that's really always been the part of helping seniors. You've always talked about helping people make an aging plan so that they aren't just hitting these hairpin tur- turns blind, that they have some idea of what to expect and how to prepare for those things. Yeah. Well, people need to, uh, uh, people should think just for a minute. You know, we kept t- talking about Bill Johnson and Vitas Hospice and, uh, the Eye Institute, mm-hmm. uh, uh, several other people. And uh, these people have been with us from the very start of this organization. And they have continued to be major sponsors. Now, why is that? Well, one, is uh, I think, is because they are all somewhat in support of senior programs because uh, they cater mostly to seniors. Uh, they know that if uh, they have a good, honest program mm-hmm. that meets the needs of seniors and we tell seniors about it, that they're more apt to have people come to them to do uh, get the service that they need. And then realizing that there were so many people that had a need for movers, for handymen, mm-hmm. for uh, getting their yards cut or the windows cleaned, or simp- this is the last week. Mm-hmm. I've had several phone calls from senior citizens that just needed some simple help cleaning their house. Sure. Uh, they could do some of the cleaning themselves. They had time to do it, but some of it was dangerous for them to do. It. And so they asked me, and I gave them a couple of, of places to go mm-hmm. to get uh, quality help at, at a low cost. And, you know, I think if people, if you're going to invite people from all over the United States to come live in Burrard County, Florida, and you're one of five county commissioners, it would seem to me that you would want to have the most welcoming community and supportive community that you could provide. Mm-hmm. And, it, it, yeah, if you've got a budget of uh, $1.2 billion, yes. uh, what are your biggest cost in that billion of budget of $1.2 billion. The biggest cost is personnel. Yeah. yeah. Not just who is actually working right now, but the support of those benefits which those people have earned over the years. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, most companies have, have done away with uh, uh, giving uh, uh uh, Pensions, compensation, yeah. uh, and, and people have to sort of buy into their own help for mm-hmm. compensation. But to me, if you work for somebody for 30 years and you retire <laughs> and you can wait 30 days and come back in at the same darn job that you got retired from, it doesn't seem right. And I, I think that kind of thing uh, mitigates against a fair treatment of people that want to uh, serve in a position and expect a fair transition to the top. Uh, 
Now, some people may not agree with me, but I bet you that most people will. Most people like to see systems that are fair, treat the people honestly, and, and try to do something for the good uh, where people are, you know, treated fairly. And that's exactly what we do with our programs. We ask people to be sponsors. We ask them mm -hmm. to be sponsors at a level they can afford. Right. We have people that simply give to the organization because they want to see it succeed because it does help people. And then we started our fundraiser, mm -hmm. the card drawing. Yes. And, and right now, is it, I don't know how many people are listening to us right now. It could be 1,000. It could be 5,000. It could be six. It could be seven. Mm -hmm. But if 1,000 listeners decided over the next month and a half they wanted to buy <coughs> one ticket, one, for that card mm -hmm. raffle, that would be a, a $25,000 income that we probably wouldn't have gotten before. That's right. But that money goes into our reserve fund to mm -hmm. help pay our bills. Yes. I take nothing. Yes. You work for very little. Yes. Uh, and we have people that our board serves free. Yes. But it, it, it service is all done with the thought of how can we do a better job in Brevard County, Florida, of making our community an elder-friendly community, which is what the state of Florida developed a program 15 years ago to do mm -hmm. and paid lip service to it. They just, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything is good that can be published in uh, state papers, and it looks good, sounds good, but what is the follow-up? Well, one of the questions you asked on the uh on the sheet, uh, you know, as we were talking about some talking points for you today, you said, you know, why even support a nonprofit? And I think you just you just um, uh, you just answered that question, because a lot of times um, when you went through particularly what happens in the helping seniors, I always use the term. This is the little engine that could because it exists. It really does exist on a shoestring and the good and the good um, support of some businesses and people who get excited about things like the Helping Seniors Car Raffle, but then it's able to turn around and help help hundreds and thousands of people, uh, both directly in terms of just people who've called the information helpline, but also tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands who come in contact with a piece of information that's published, whether it be in our newsletter that's carried in the Senior Scene uh, magazine, 14,000 copies of that go out each month, uh, whether we broadcast three times a day, as you know, on the Space Coast Government TV, every single uh, cable-connected household in this county has access to that. We're on the Internet with our YouTube channel. We, uh, You do the articles all the time in all these publications. We have the... Um, the radio show here every Wednesday on 90.3 WEJF and getting all this word out. And yet it's all done. If somebody looked at it from the outside, they would probably go, this is unbelievable that you guys are able to do this much on so little. But that's why we need people's help. And that's why we need them to get involved in this um, in this car raffle, because that's a way that you as a listener can take an active stance. And the beautiful thing is you actually get something very valuable out of it. You might win one of these beautiful cars. We haven't even stopped and talked about the cars yet, but we have this amazing 2019 Dodge Challenger that AJ hires, who has helped the Helping Seniors Group for years and years, uh, and you guys go way, way back, um, has made it possible for us to be able to do this uh, winner picks a car raffle. And so tomorrow afternoon, I think at the Five Guys Cruise Inn, uh, which is over here on Palm Bay Road, um, at I-95, we're going to have that Dodge Challenger out there. People are going to come by. It's the Mopars Cruising. It's a big deal if you've never been out there. It's so much fun. Everybody brings these classic collector cars, and we're going to have a true muscle car there, this Dodge Challenger, one of three cars that you could win in the Helping Seniors uh, car raffle. The other two, of course, is that uh, beautiful 2019 red Dodge Ram truck, or if you're a little sporty, you could be tooling around in that 2019 Mazda Miata convertible, and that's those are all showstoppers, and they're they're just they're wonderful cars to see. But for twenty five dollars, you're supporting the work of helping seniors. You now have a chance to 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 if you if your ticket is pulled, pick the car you'd like to win. And in all cases, it's your uh, opportunity to be part of the great grand drawing event April twenty seventh at the American Muscle Car Museum. So it's really, and that's thanks to again your. 
uh, your uh, relationship with Mark Pylock, the owner of that, who has kindly invited us back again this year to be able to to do that so we can support the work of helping seniors. Well, most of the events he does out there are for charities. Yes. And Mark, uh, you know, Mark earned his money through yes. uh, through sell- selling the stuff that you put in the dog food that makes dog and cat food that makes it smell good. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, but, but if he can do that and then buy um, roughly 250 muscle cars worth wow. $32 million, and build a huge, huge facility that's immaculate. Wow, it is. And they, they, they do restore cars there. They do change their cars. They move cars in and out. So it's not, it's not the same cars you see every year. They, right. They, they do. They, they get rest of them. They have, they have these cars that are called the lead cars for the big races. And uh, there's just a lot of famous cars in there, too. Yes, and yes. It, it's an evening of fun, and, and I've, I've had this. A number of women have called me because they want to get uh, tickets to uh, the, so that their sons can sure. go and see the muscle cars and uh, and have a good time. Um, I've got a number of uh, calls from people outside of, uh, and this is important. I, I I think that more people need to know this. People don't just contribute to a nonprofit because of what they might possibly win in a mm-hmm. car raffle. Right. And I can I can safely and honestly say that because I've had several phone calls this year where people have bought either two tickets or five tickets and said, while we would like very much to win one of those cars, we like reading about what you're doing. Right. And we've gone on the website and looked at your website on the Internet and what you're doing is important, and I wish that there was a similar organization where I live yes. that that could help me get the kind of services that I need. And uh, I, I have found, uh, Carrie, that uh, what, what's really worrisome to me is, and I have talked about this in so many radio shows, that we have over 75,000 veterans. Yes. Here in Burrard County, and when you can talk about veterans, but you, a number we never really see are how many unremarried spouses of mm-hmm, veterans mm-hmm. that we have living here. They're living on on fixed incomes of seven, eight, and nine hundred dollars. The reason I mention those three numbers is because I've had women mm-hmm. that were married to people that work for Harris, and they the way they they plan for their Retirement uh, didn't entitle them to any more than seven or eight hundred or nine hundred a month, mm-hmm. and when we're older and we think about the money we're bringing in, a lot of times we don't think what that means if if we die, and our spouse uh, would be dependent on what our our living income mm-hmm. is, not what our dead income is. Sure, and. Uh, when when these women find out that they're living on seven or eight hundred dollars a month, uh, and when you're in an area where, if you go if you if you go to tri- want to live at Trinity Towers, they've renovated the place. They have mm-hmm. new management down there. And it's great. There's some great living places in Brevard County. They're not your home. Right. They're not what you grew up in. But when you consider what they're offering to you sure. in your retirement years. It's pretty darn nice, and uh, yeah, it's not your home, but it's still right. is adequate. But the waiting list for the places that are mm-hmm. three, four hundred dollars a month that are based on what your income is, they're waiting list of over a year. Yes. So when people start, they, they, I, I, I think I mentioned on the show, I may not have. But I had two phone calls recently from people who lived up north, one in New Jersey and one in Chicago, that wanted to move here to mm-hmm. Burrard County. And when I asked them what their monthly income was, one of them said $750. And I said, ma'am, I said, how are you going to live here in Burrard County with an income of $750? She says, well, I'll get the vouchers for housing, and I'll get vouchers for food, and i get vouchers for that. I said, where do you live? She said, Chicago. I said, mm-hmm. Murray County is not Chicago. You're right, not going right. to get those kind of vouchers here. 
that are guaranteed. I said, you're going to come into an area that right now, the best I could guess on you renting a place for is more than what your entire income is. And she says, you're not serious, are you? I said, ma'am, I'm as serious yes. as I can be. I said, for you to live in Chicago, even though it's cold, and you to come down here to Burr County, Florida, to live, she had, she had spent one summer in Cocoa. She really loved it there. But she thought that as many people, that they, they don't think to look ahead and see what's available and the areas they're going to. Uh, just because they, in one com part of our country that has community programs that serve uh, people that fit in certain categories and need, it does not mean, you know, that money doesn't follow them when they move from one state to another. They're moving into a new state. Yeah, I've heard that. Um, that uh, There's a fellow, you know him as well, Phil Keshline. He's one of the area coordinators for AARP, and he, he says, I get these calls all the time from people who maybe call from New Jersey, and they think that, um, you know, his, his answer is, where did you pay your taxes? It's up in New, New Jersey, and why do you want to move to Florida? Well, the taxes are lower in Florida, but that it's it's that flip side then you don't get the necessarily the level of services that you might be used to just like you're speaking about with the lady caller from from Chicago and that's one of the challenges is is particularly when we were reading those statistics earlier in the program about how old a county that Brevard County is it really puts more on i think the leadership in this county to think about ways that given all these parameters that there's a there is a way to pay a little bit more attention to seniors and find a way to make sure that um programs that are available are communicated to them i mean joe you know we've had people call up didn't even know uh like you said it happens all the time about uh about the veterans benefit or people who don't even know uh about a program called meals on wheels or people who don't know how to get a ride to the doctor or things like that and there are fairly reasonable options, especially if you can plan a little bit ahead and work work some things out. Yep. You know, we talk about what we're talking about now. It makes me think about the, the, some of the stuff I read in Florida today, and I read about uh, the communities and taking money away from different organizations. And then, then I then I think about uh, all this mess going on where they want to tear all the statues down from the Confederate, uh, you know, Confederate mm -hmm. statues from the Civil War. Yeah, I'm a student of history, and mm -hmm. I, I, I really, really appreciate what those that fought for the North and the South did mm -hmm. to help Americans, the United States mm -hmm. citizens, understand what it meant to be a united people mm -hmm. and the advantage that we had from being a whole instead of being divided. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you have to walk through some trying periods. Sure. But to have a handful of people <clears throat> trying to dictate to, the, to, to hands and feet of people what they should do just doesn't make sense to me. And that's the same thing I get when I start thinking about our care programs, our people that uh, jump in with all this stuff and, and make a comment or a statement in the newspaper about how uh, if we do this, it's going to mean the end of the world. And that's, <laughs> that's just not true. Yeah. And But the sad part, Carrie, is that so many people believe it. And yeah. I remember years ago when uh, you know, when John Harper had his station WML down at Turtle Mound, there was a, mm -hmm. a couple of people that had a morning show. And, geez, they were always after uh, after Florida today. You know, every morning. <laughs> they were, I, I wondered where they got all this information. Well, I'm starting to see now. And, and I, 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 I really like reading my newspaper. I I. I like Florida Day as a newspaper, but I don't like what it's become. Right. And uh, I, 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 I look for honesty in a newspaper, and I think it's really important. I had a family member that worked for Gannett, uh, and, and this, this person is now running a newspaper up in Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, honesty and truth are extremely important, and if people call us, for an answer or a service or something, we are going to do the very, very best we can to to, uh, to tell them what what they need to hear, not right. what they would like to hear. Because right. I mean, one of the things I do when people talk to me, I almost invariably I will ask them, 
what their financial situation is. is. And most people realize that I'm not trying to uh, to uh, belittle them for either the amount or the, mm-hmm. the lack of an amount that they put anything aside. It's simply to help find out what I can recommend right. them to do. I've heard you and, uh, in particular, Bill Johnson, I think it was just last week when you guys were doing a radio show. And again, um, all these questions become so relevant because it has to do when he was going through these limitations about Medicaid planning and some of the things that you guys were covering on that particular radio show, that really comes back to it. You have to have these facts because... It's not, it's not being nosy. It's just trying to help get them pointed into a solution that's actually going to benefit them. Yeah. Well, I, I think that people need to recognize that, uh, that the panelists on this show uh, try to, to get the best information out. And I think last week on the show, uh, uh, how many people would ever have thought that, that a dentist would sit here on the air and say, uh, uh why pull a tooth? Right, and you know, just because just because you think it might be, you need to be pulled, you better make sure mm-hmm. that. It, and, and, and you know, you know, he, he, he could go go ahead and pull that tooth, and he could get you know four or five hundred dollars for pulling the right. tooth. And right. people say this is ridiculous, but this these are some of the costs that dentists get for doing his service. Absolutely, but this his thrust was, why do something we don't need to do? Right. Why not find out what we need to do? Um, I'm going to thank you, for Carrie, for yeah. being on the show today, Pleasure. and I'm going to thank the listeners for being with us. And I'll let you say what else you're going to say to close out the show then. Just Be buy, careful. buy your ticket. Go to HelpingSeniorsCarRaffle.com, HelpingSeniorsCarRaffle.com. Is that it, John? John tells me that's it. <laughs> Folks, we'll see you next week. And and do go to the Five Guys uh, Drive-In yes. Store. You have a lot of fun. If you got a question, call us at 473-7770. Bye-bye.